It's, uh, it's good to be with you again. Hey, great to be here. We got a new uh, backdrop. backdrop. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, uh, it's good to be with all of you. Uh, we are moving on through the Apostles' Creed, and today we are starting the second article of the Apostles' Creed. The second Which is why we're here. Because the second article is all about Jesus. Jesus. Yeah. So we got Jesus uh, in, in the background. So we are on page 164, page 164 in the Catechism, with the second article of the Creed, and we're going to tackle the first part of the second article. Lots of numbers thrown out here. but Well, so our pattern is, just like we did with the first article, we're going to have two videos. Mm -hmm. So this is part one yep. of the second article. Yep. And here we go. So I'll go ahead and read... Uh, the second article of the Creed and the first part of Luther's explanation, and then we'll dive right in. And I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. What does this mean? I believe that Jesus Christ, true God, begotten of the Father from eternity, and also true man, born of the Virgin Mary, is my Lord. Oh, good. You stopped there. Yes. We're going to save the rest for next week. Yeah, yeah we'll get yeah. the rest okay. next time. So if you take a look at the bottom of page 164 under the central thought, uh, the bold paragraph there says, As Christians, we confess this man, Jesus, is God and Lord. He is both my creator and redeemer. So Jesus, kind of a unique person. There's Jesus, only one Jesus. There's only one Jesus. He is both true God, but also true man. He yes. is God, but a human being at the same time. Right. Kind of crazy. How does this work? Not really sure, but Jesus, uh, what we say in the church, kind of the technical language is Jesus has two natures. He has the divine nature, his God nature, but also human nature. He's a man. They are both true at the same time. Yep. It doesn't make sense because the creator is the creator. Mm -hmm. you're, God is God, you're not. But yep. in Jesus' case, he is God, but he's also really a human being. He yep. becomes part of his creation. Yep. Uh, so one of the things we talked about last time with the first article is that God the Father is the creator. God the Son is the redeemer. In our small catechism, they are making sure that yeah. we realize that Jesus is both yes. true God and true man at the same time. Yeah, Still. it is. Uh, you know, when we talked about the first article, it is mostly about God the Father and God the Father as creator. Now, the Son and the Holy Spirit are also involved in creation, being creators, but right. we mostly, for, for the sake of simplicity, but this is also how, this, how the Bible talks, the Father is Creator, and the yes. Son is Redeemer. Now, of course, the Father are, and the Holy Spirit are both involved in our redemption, but it is mostly the Son who is focus, focuses on, on redemption. Yeah, so at the creation, the Son and the Holy Spirit are there in doing stuff, mm -hmm. in saving us. That word, word redemption, and that'll come up more next week about what Jesus does, well, he does it because the Father wants him to save all creation, and he does it in and through the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit creates the church, but puts it into Jesus who takes us to the... They're all connected together, mm -hmm. uh, and they work together in harmony yep. or concert. Yep. Yep. So all three persons of the Trinity are involved in our creation, our redemption, yes. and our sanctification. Yep. But kind of the word I've been using, each person kind of has his own specialty. I like that. I think that works well. Yep. Yeah. All right, well, if you want to take a look, well, you, you wanted to take a look at question 149. Okay. Why do I confess that Jesus Christ is my Lord? Well, what does it mean to have a Lord? And why is Jesus our Lord? Yeah, so, so the fact that Jesus is our Lord is that he's in charge. Yeah. Right? The, uh, he, he is the one who is in charge of uh, ultimately sin and death and the power of the devil. He is in charge of the devil. I mean, ultimately, mm -hmm. he's conquered the devil. Uh, the grave, and, and we're looking over here at, at this window where he's not in the tomb. Mm -hmm. The tomb could not hold him. He is the Lord of all. He's the Lord of life. Mm -hmm. uh, 
But the thing that, I, that gets me excited about this is I think about it, and, and the Trinity is a mystery, mm -hmm. but Jesus, true man and true God, is the only person of the Trinity that you or I will be able to look in the eyes. Yes. Because I can't see God the Father. Mm -hmm. I can't see the Holy Spirit, but I can look Jesus in the eyes. We can, we can relate to Jesus, God the Son, in a special way because he is also a human being. We know how to relate to other human beings. Right. Hopefully. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, while we can relate to God the Father and God the Holy Spirit, it's, it's strange to us because... We're not God. We're, we're not God. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So not only can we relate to Jesus, but we also know he relates to us. We see this in the scriptures. Mm -hmm. he, he relates to people who have a disease and he has mercy on them and heals them. Mm -hmm. He relates to the grief of Mary and Martha, and he himself is grieving because Lazarus has died and yeah. he cries with them. Yeah. Uh, he also gets angry. Mm -hmm. like he goes into his father's house in the temple and he, like, this isn't right. Mm -hmm. So he, he is actually a human being. And, and so uh, songs will talk this way, what a friend we have in Jesus, mm -hmm. all our sins and griefs to bear. Yep. Uh, he knows us. Yep. And we are known by God. And that is, um, it is an awesome thing, I think, that is easy to take for granted, mm -hmm. maybe. Well, and we'll get this more into this more in the next video, but Jesus also died. As a human yes. being, he died. Yeah. And that is something that we will all, unless Jesus comes back first, we will all experience. So Jesus himself has experienced death, but he's also experienced resurrection. But we'll get to that more in our next video. Yeah, he doesn't pretend or guess yeah. what it's like to be a human being. He's actually been there mm -hmm. and done that. And yeah. then, mysteriously, he is here yes. with us. Yeah. yeah, it's pretty amazing. Awesome stuff. So, jumping ahead to page one, 166 to question 151, what does it mean to confess that Jesus is true God? So we've been talking about Jesus as true man, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in a second, right. but what does it mean that Jesus is also true God? And, and this is kind of a, a, maybe kind of a confusing thing that Jesus is the Son of God as the second person of the Trinity. He has always existed. The Son of God has always existed as God, but the Son of God has not always been a human being. Yes. He took on human flesh when uh, he was conceived in Mary's womb, and he was born. Um, and he has always, since then, he has always been a human being, always will be a man, but from eternity, he has not always been a human being. So it's kind of confusing. He's always been God, but he's not always been a human. Yeah, so, so St. John would say, the Word became flesh mm -hmm. and dwelt among us. The Word being Jesus. The Word, yes, Jesus is the Word who was always there. So when it says Jesus is our creator and redeemer, so when God the Father creates out of nothing by speaking a word, Jesus is the Word. Mm -hmm. But you're right, and so important to say, God has not always been, or the, Jesus has not, how did you the, say it? The Son of God. The Son of God. Has not always been a human. Has not always been a human being. However, now that he is a human being, he's never not going to be a human being. Yep. Like he is at the right hand of the Father mm -hmm. right now, wherever that is, yep. <laughs> in a body, and he's not ever going to get out of that body because mm -hmm. bodies are actually really important. Yes. Yeah. Yep. So, again, Jesus, even when he takes on human flesh, he is still fully God. How does that work? I don't really know. It's, it's a mystery. How can a person be both God and, and human being? It's kind of a strange mystery, but it's a good mystery and it's meant for our good. We need him to be both. So I'm thinking about Peter who walks on the water and he sinks below the waves. If Jesus is only true man, he says, well, that really stinks that Peter is sinking below the waves. Sorry, Peter, too bad. Mm -hmm. If he's only true God, maybe he doesn't even have any reaction to Peter sinking below the waves. Mm -hmm. So, well, I'm going to undo that later. He's both and he reacts and he saves. He's not a God who is far away. He's mm -hmm. a God who is near. Yes. Uh, one of the names for Jesus is Emmanuel, which means God with us. He, yes. is, he was literally with us when he walked this earth, but he continues to be with us uh, in and through the church. Yeah. Uh, so moving on uh, to question 153 on the next page here. So going back to Jesus being man, what does it mean to confess that Jesus is true man? 
Well, the answer here, Jesus is human in the very same sense that we are human, except without sin. So Jesus, he was just like you and I, except he didn't sin. But he experienced all the same sorts of things that we experienced. And you were talking about that earlier, yeah. that Jesus had feelings. He, he experienced the death of loved ones. Um, he got sick. He experienced suffering. He experienced good things. Like he went to a wedding that was probably a lot of fun. He, he had friendships. He knew how to have fun? I, he he yeah, knew yeah. how to have fun better than Nobody could other. have fun better than yeah, Jesus. He, yeah, he actually knew what yeah. it meant to have yeah. fun. But uh, he had relationships, friendships. He, he had a human family. So he had all these things that, that we also have. So, yeah. yeah. Well, moving on to question 155 now <clears throat> on page 168. What do we call the event by which the Son of God became man? So the Son of God took on human flesh. It's kind of a fancy way of saying he became a human being. Uh, we call that event the incarnation. Carnate or enfleshment. Yep. Right. The, the taking on human flesh. Yep. So I would say, as you and I were talking about this earlier, so God comes in a way that we can comprehend and understand. Mm -hmm. I don't understand the mystery of God in God's self. Yeah. But I understand I'm a, a male human being. You're a male human being. We're roughly the same size. Mm -hmm. uh, I understand that. And so God, I can understand what a baby is. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so the mystery is now revealed mm -hmm. to us. Yep. And that's what we celebrate at Christmas. Yep. That God has, Emmanuel, God is with us. The promises that God made all along the way mm -hmm. are here. Yes. It's uh, an understatement to say that Christmas, the incarnation, is a really big deal. Right. God becomes a human being just like us. Yeah. What kind of God does that? A God that would come, become a human being, live with us in the sin and misery that we all experience, that would join us in that. That's a pretty awesome God that would do that, a pretty loving God, merciful God that would do that. He doesn't just say, hey, I think I can imagine what you're <laughs> going through. He actually, he's been there. Absolutely. One more question, I think, that we'll go through. Question 158, the bottom of page 169. What does it mean for us as human creatures that the Son of God has become our brother? So take a step back. In the incarnation, by Jesus becoming a human being, he has become our brother. He is someone that we can relate to because he's a human being just like us. So what does it mean that just he's someone just like us, that he can that he has become our brother? Well, it means that God has become a man, sharing our humanity in all things but sin. Well, and brother is also that that also is because we have in the first article a father, mm -hmm. and so because we have an earth uh, heavenly father, the Son of God, who we are his children. So Jesus is our brother. Yes, yeah, he's you can talk kind of think about him as a our good big brother, right? That takes care yeah. of us. So if you turn to page one seventy, there's a couple of answers here. Uh, Jesus has a human ancestry. Uh, you can trace his lineage through a lot of the people in the Old Testament. David, Abraham, Jacob, all those, all those guys. He didn't just uh, teleport here nope. or arrive on a spaceship from nope. another galaxy far, far away. No, he came from a specific people, from the yeah. tribe of Judah, of the yes. people of Israel. Yeah. Uh, Jesus has a human body and soul. Both. A genuine human being. Yes. Didn't he, just appear to be one. He, he came to save not just our souls. He came to save not just our bodies. He came to save both our body and soul by himself becoming a human body and soul or taking on a human body and soul. Uh, letter C, Jesus has a human sex. Jesus was a man. And he still is. He still is. A male. He, he is a male. Um, born of a woman, born of the Virgin Mary, but Jesus himself is, is a man. And when Jesus was uh, 40 days old, they took him into the temple and he was circumcised. When he was eight days old. When he was eight days old. Yeah, they took him to the temple when he was 40, but he was circumcised when he was eight. Mm -hmm. Edit that out. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so circumcision though, was not for females. No. For males. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. But all, all for our benefit, so. Yeah, and I think even as we've talked, in 2020, when we have confusion about what's a man and what's a woman or even what's a human being, mm -hmm. like Jesus is a true man, true human being, and yeah. he literally is a male human being. Yeah. Yep. That doesn't make males better than females. Absolutely Just not. Just distinct to his identity. Yes. 
Uh, and finally, we've already talked about this with the letter D. Jesus has human needs and feelings. Jesus got hungry. He needed to sleep. He needed human relationships. He needed other people to take care of him, to provide for him. Uh, he had lots and lots of feelings, same kind of feelings we do. Yeah. Uh, but in all of that, Jesus was without sin. And Jesus' feelings is it, it, Jesus' feelings are a part of who he is, like a human being, and they're always consistent with reality. Mm -hmm. He doesn't fear things that don't need to be feared. Yeah. Uh, he has joy over things that legitimately give joy. Mm -hmm. When he gets angry, it's legitimate. Yeah. Uh, when he grieves, it's because something sad, something terrible, or terrible is or has happened. Mm -hmm. um, we, because we're sinful human beings, our feelings don't always match reality. Yeah, we have feelings and they're very real, but it doesn't always mean they're true. Yes. My, my feelings are very, very fickle. Um, it doesn't yeah. mean that they are, they are an accurate representation of reality, as you've been saying. Yeah. But Jesus' feelings, absolutely are and so we in our own feelings we look to jesus and, and his feelings how he experienced things I, I think there's so there's nothing more human or real or true than jesus amen yeah all right well this so this video we've covered the first part of the second article of the apostles creed uh, and it's really it can be boiled down to the identity of jesus who jesus is he is my Lord, true God and true man. Yes, amen. The next video, we're going to take a look at what Jesus does. We're going to take a look at his work, what he did, what he continues to do. What he will do also. And, and do. then because of all that, just like you did with the first article then, uh, where the first article we said, for all this it is my duty to thank and praise, serve and obey him, our heavenly father. In this case, we're going to say that I may be his own mm -hmm. and live under him in his kingdom. What is now our response to who Jesus is. Who Jesus is. And what he does. And what he does. And it takes faith then to believe that Jesus is who he is. Mm -hmm. And he did, does, and will do what he says. Yep. Yeah. Well, amen again. All right. All right. Well, we'll wrap up this video here and we'll see you next time. Good. <laughs>